did not appear in court today. He will be speaking at 4.30 today. Now, today, in front of a panel of five appellate justices, Trump's lawyer argued that this huge judgment should be thrown out, arguing that it's grossly excessive in large part because the civil case was based on allegations past the statute of limitations. It still doesn't allow the trial court to do what it did, which is to go way back in time to 2011 and 2012 and assign liability and major consequences, huge financial consequences, based on an analysis that never looked at a 2017 or 2015 statement set. Trump's lawyers also argued that there was no victims in this case. Listen. Every case that you cite involved where there was damage to consumers, damage to the marketplace, You've got a, a scheme to. I never thought I'd say those words, but the New York Appellate Court has started hearing arguments on Trump's fraud case. It's taken forever, but we knew this was going to happen. We knew this was going to get there. We're also waiting for the appeal on the ridiculous 32 conviction nonsense with uh, Twinkies brag. But this is the Letitia James case. This is the fraud case that never was. This is the fraud case where nobody lost any money. How do you have a fraud case when nobody loses any money when there is no victim? That's a very good question. That's what Trump's lawyers have been arguing in front of the appellate court. I want to show you some clips today from the appellate court because this is just rich. Uh, these guys, now remember, these guys are, are, are New York appellate court judges. So they've been in the New York judicial political system forever. These guys are fairly left. I mean, they're left leaning. Let's just be honest. And to hear them just lambast, not actually Letitia James because she wasn't there. Uh, they had some lackey representing the AG's office, but you've got to hear this stuff. It's absolutely going to make your Friday. This is the good news on the Friday. And then we got to get into some bad news. Hey, let's check this stuff out. Here we go. So first we're going to get into a clip where one of the judges is asking about uh, case precedent because realize that they brought this civil fraud case on, on an executive order, 6312, uh, that allowed for the state to sue, to go with a civil action against defendants for fraud. Now, this was brought, this, this uh, legislation was brought about because of things like the failure of Lehman Brothers and other things. But listen to this judge. He's not buying this crap. May it please the court, Judith Vail for the New York Attorney General's office. All of the defendants repeatedly violated- Ms. Vail, can you identify- I love the fact that he interrupts her. Like, yeah, yeah, move on. Because this is this is so stupid. I want to start asking you questions. By any previous case in which the attorney general sued under executive law 6312 to upset a private business transaction that was between equally sophisticated partners where the supposed victim had the ability and legal obligation to discover the allegedly misrepresented matters by conducting its own due diligence where the supposed wrongdoer advised the supposed victim through written disclaimers to conduct its own due diligence and to draw its own conclusions, where the alleged misrepresentation almost entirely concerned inherently subjective valuations of properties and businesses. Yes. And where, and where the victim never complained about any fraud in the transactional losses from it. Because I've gone through the cases which you've cited, and all of them always involved the consumer protection aspect, it involved protection of the market. Well, several responses. And I want to add to his question and little to no impact on the public marketplace. Well, so two judges have already waited and said, hey, uh, you cited a bunch of case law and all of this case law either had damage. There was some level of damage. Somebody brought a suit. Somebody stuck their hand up and said, hey, I got screwed. Uh, or there was damage to the overall marketplace, i.e. Lehman Brothers, where Lehman Brothers uh, was involved in a, in a fraud scheme to pump up property values by an appraiser on behalf of a lender to basically coax unsophisticated homeowners or home buyers into signing up for loans they could not afford. That's damage to the market. In this particular case, the guy says it. Hey, why are you trying to draw a file a suit on a private business transaction between two sophisticated private parties that everybody knows their due diligence? Everybody knows their risk. Where's the damage? This is just rich. She has no answer. We're going to dive into another clip where we go a little bit deeper because there's some other questions even about the size of the settlement. So let's dive into this one. 
I want you to listen to what he has to say because he specifically addresses some of this nonsense that this fraud case was supposedly based on. And to draw its own conclusions where the alleged misrepresentation almost entirely concerned inherently subjective valuations of properties and businesses. And where, and where the victim never complained about any fraud in the transactional losses from it. Because I've gone through the cases which you've cited, and all of them always involved the consumer protection aspect. It involved protection of the market. Oh, several responses. And I want to add to his question. Suppose you're referring to the fact that Trump received a lower interest rate than he might otherwise have received. But doesn't, didn't have, haven't you yourself conceded that the assets were sufficient to get the lower interest rate of the pri private wealth management uh, direction? Of the incredible doesn't, doesn't Mr. Hay, collateral. Doesn't Mr. Hay testify that there were 14 factors and this was the least important factor? So the, the guy's going, this judge is just awesome because he's going through, basically starts with case law and then he starts looking at the actual case going, wait a minute, nobody actually complained. The banks all got paid back. You're arguing that Trump committed fraud to get a lower interest rate? That's it? Uh, the bank had a, a responsibility to do its own due diligence, which it did. You don't think the bank went to Mar-a-Lago and said, uh, is this thing worth $600 million? You don't think the bank did that? You think the bank is that dumb? It's Deutsche Bank. It's Wells Fargo. And then he goes on to say, wait a minute. Uh, I'm looking at the, uh, the bank's own testimony where he testified that there are 14 factors that go into determining the interest rate, the least important of which is the personal net worth statement of the borrower. Like this is so low on the totem pole, it's just nonsense. So these judges are not buying this crap. They're looking at this going, no. They're taking, I believe, O'Leary's take on this. And if you if you, if you watch Kevin O'Leary over and over again, he has been out on the news circuit, uh, on the talk shows, lambasting New York, calling this a, a, an attack on the American brand. Because realize that America is the most stable economy in the world to put capital to long-term use, especially in real estate. This, If this uh, case is allowed to stand, it will undercut all of that, at least in New York, but also in America in general. And these guys are not buying it. They're looking at this going, no, this is bullshit. This is BS. What you using I'm sorry, but what's being described sounds an awful lot like a potential commercial dispute between private actors. The internet issue was between a very big bank, Wells Fargo, and a, a professional appraisal firm. But and it wasn't the doubt, weren't, weren't, wasn't the concern there that the public would ultimately be negatively impacted and affected by what those corporate actors were doing. So that, that's, you're pointing to Ernst & Young, you're pointing to First American. Ernst & Young, you're dealing with the collapse of Lehman Brothers. First American, you're dealing with an action brought against an appraiser who overvalued pra properties at the behest of a lender perpetrating a scheme to induce unsophisticated consumers into taking out home loans that they could not afford. It hardly seems that that justifies bringing an action to protect against President Trump. Exactly. The, the entire point of this legislation, again, it, it formed out of Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers co-opted an appraiser on their behalf. The appraiser pumped up property values uh, so that Lehman Brothers, uh, as the lender, could induce unsophisticated citizens to go take out loans they couldn't afford. This transaction is entirely different. This is a bank lending money to a, pri to a, a business, the Trump Organization, based on 14 factors, one of which was the valuation of his personal, of his personal corporate net worth which the bank had a responsibility, their own responsibility to do their own due diligence. This is just amazing. These judges are not buying it and it gets even worse. Which is what you have here. I mean, you've got two really sophisticated bodies in which no one lost any money. And that was the point of my initial question. Every case that you cite involved where there was damage to consumers, damage to the marketplace. Actual damage. You've got a, a scheme to get unsophisticated consumers to take out home loans. You got a collapse of Lehman Brothers. You don't have anything like that here. And the statute is written broadly because the legislature wants the attorney general to go in and stop fraud and illegality. Counsel, whether an example of what you're talking about, I think, is People versus Allen, isn't it? There it was just a dispute among partners. Yes, was, and it, the it investors... didn't affect the public. I mean, Sorry, go ahead. 
at all. But I think you hear underneath all these questions, the question of mission creep. And 6312 morphed into something that it was not meant to do. And that's, that's something you must address because there has to be some limitation on what the attorney general can do in inter interfering in these private uh, transactions, as Justice Friedman said, that where people don't claim harm. So what is the limiting principle? Well, I'll say- So huge. That statement is massive. There has to be guardrails. He's, he's basically getting a veiled comment that this attorney general is off the freaking reservation. She's off the rails. 6312 was never meant to do this. It was never meant to bring actions in a private transaction where no one has claimed damage or fraud. There are no damages. Everybody got repaid with interest. They're so happy. They said, we want to do more business with President Trump and the Trump organization. These guys are absolutely nailing the AG's office to the wall. I would not be surprised if they completely overturn this entire case. Or if they don't overturn it, they knock the damages down to something so minimal that everybody's like, yeah, whatever, move on. It's a cost of doing business. This is, I think, going to be huge. I think Trump is going to win this on appeal. I think they are going to flip this around. That's my personal take just from hearing these justices so far. We'd love to know what you guys think in the chat because I think this will be huge, especially if they, I don't know how long it's going to take them to render a decision uh, after their oral arguments. I'll have to look up what the normal time frame is in New York. But if this hits even before the election, that would be massive for there to be headlines that Trump flips Letitia James' entire case. The only fraud here, the only person that should go to jail here is Letitia James for vast prosecutorial overreach and misconduct. Hey guys, if everybody could please do me a favor, there's no cost for these. Just hit that like button, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you like the content, share it with everybody you know. If you really like the content, please consider supporting us with a super or join us as a member of the Courageous Army. You guys are awesome.